All right, hey guys, welcome back. Uh, I mentioned in the last video that I do a uh, update on my 300 Blackout from Sanders Armory and kind of how it's set up now as my truck gun. So this is the case it usually rides in. So really nondescript and blends in with everything else in the back of my uh, Suburban. So I'm gonna show you this real quick just cause it's not really related, but cause it's a truck gun. Spare magazine for my carry gun, loaded up, just in case. Uh, yeah, because if I need this rifle, there's a good chance I'm going to need a spare mag for my carry gun. Anyways, uh, so yeah, I'm setting it up right now, uh, working towards getting it to where all these magazines are loaded. That's a little mag carrier that I'm going to replace with something else eventually that I can use like a bandolier or something. Uh, kind of small and compact to keep with this. Uh, this is the mag that stays in the gun. It is loaded, as you can see. These are just Remington uh, hunting rounds. Got them for fairly cheap, which for 300 Blackout is a pretty good accomplishment. And I run them because they're hollow points, and uh, they definitely will do the job on any two- or four-legged critter I need to take care of. But anyways, let's jump into the gun real quick. Um... We'll start with the top here. Oh, I'm dropping it. Um, in case anybody is wondering, it's safety checked. But, anyways, so on top I have a Hollow Sun. What are you? This is the HS403B with a 2MOA dot. Uh, I love this little thing. It's actually been really durable and reliable. It rides in, like I said, rides in the truck most of the time and. All the different temperature fluctuations, you can see, can you, where'd you go, there it is, almost, yep, there it is, you can see the dot, oh, that shows up really clear on here, but, uh, yeah, so, it rides in there, it's been holding up really well, uh, but even though that's been really durable, not giving me any problems, and it's held zero, and haven't had any battery draining issues, I still run rear iron, Front iron. This front iron, I do not remember the brand of. I'll show you the the logo on it real quick if I can get it to focus. There we go. That's the logo that's on that. Uh, if anybody knows the brand, go throw it in the comments or whatever. But this back so backup side is a uh, Magpul. I got it because of how slim line it is. And it was also pretty cheap. Um, but it's been holding up good too. So I'll slide it in and Holding zero and working well. Uh, moving to the front. I already showed you this front flip up front sight. Um, the weapon light I'm running on it right now, good lord, focus, is this little M3X from Inside, I believe. Uh, I don't see it. This is old military weapon light. And I got the uh, pressure pad running around to right here. The reason I run it right here is it allows me. When I'm holding the rifle, I can hold it pretty much like this, except for the slings usually swim through like that. But I can hit it, activate the light. You can see batteries are going out, but you see the light still works. Um, so I can hit it with my left hand, which is my support hand because I'm a righty. Uh, but I also, if I have to switch transition and work from the opposite end of the gun, I can still reach across the rail right here and activate the light without uh, impeding my sight picture, even if I'm running the irons. Um, which was for me that was a really important thing. I apologize, I'm saying I'm a lot. But anyways, uh, so for me that was a big deal to be able to actuate my light no matter what, because uh, I never know if I ever have to use this rifle in defensive life uh, or anything like that. Then uh, I want to. I don't know what I'm going to be getting into because it's going to be a bad day if I have to pull this thing out. But uh, yeah, so I'm planning on uh, swapping this light out for a streamlight uh, rail mount one uh, I'm probably gonna run that right here and then the pressure pad in the same spot right here which this is just held in by the uh, 3m uh, Lord what is it called uh, velcro adhesive so it's got a velcro on it and it's adhesive to the rail you can see right down in here a tiny little gap that's the part that this is adhered to, and then the Velcro is just stuck on there. And I haven't had any problems uh, 
with it staying or moving or anything, even when the gun's hot from sitting in the car or uh, when it's hot from dumping rounds through it. Um, I'll show you one of the reasons that, that I can say that with confidence is back here. You see the little selector lever? It's got a fun little secret. Get you to focus. There we go. Third position. So this is a binary trigger uh, from Franklin Armory. Uh, so I guess since we jumped into that, we'll we'll come back down to this end of the gun. Uh, arrow precision lower. That's all mil spec internals except for the binary trigger. Uh, that I don't know the pull weights on it. But I know it's a good trigger in uh, semi-auto. You will still be real accurate with it. Even in binary, if you want to take your time and not just dump mags, which is usually how I use it, just for fun. But it does have some uh, practical application with double taps. It's definitely nice to use for that because it's it's quicker than I can be on the trigger uh, with my current financial situation. What I mean by that is I can't afford to buy enough 300 blackout to practice double taps with recoil and I've done plenty of dry fire practicing and stuff like that so I'm very familiar and comfortable with the gun and I'm very quick in off that first shot but that second shot usually is a little slower than I'd like it to be um, so I got the binary trigger for that and as well of being able to put down suppressive fire if need be and just to have a ton of fun uh, you'll see this lower again hopefully here soon when I start making a little bit more money but it won't be with the same upper I'm gonna put that lower on a 5.56 gun since uh, that's going to be a little bit cheaper, I can afford to train with it a little bit more. And uh, when I want to have fun and just dump ammo, it's still not going to cost me anything. But uh, comparatively. But yeah, so I haven't had uh, any issues out of that trigger. I haven't had any light primer strikes or anything go wrong with it. Sorry, I'm adjusting the sling. Uh, moving back, I have Magpul MOE for it, or uh, pistol grip. Traded uh, my buddy, this came with his build, and I traded him a backup sight that I had as a spare for this because I was tired of the A2 grip that was on it, but yeah, so that's that. Uh, in the back here, just running an SBA3 brace with my sling tied up with a uh, little homemade ranger band, and then that purple you're seeing, that paracord, is how I have the sling set up, so this is just a Amazon special. Get it back in the focus and put it down. This is an Amazon special sling. Um, so it's not the best quality sling, but it's definitely doing the job right now until I can afford to invest in the kind of sling that I want. Also, when I figure out what kind of sling that is. But uh, it's working for now. It's holding up good. But because of what it is, it doesn't have some of the attachment options. And it was... Uh, what was it in the back? The back had an HK style clip on it. So I took that off. Or no, I left that on there. Sorry, I gotta get this in here. Yeah, I left that on here with the little bungee section. The front part here is what I modified. Because this used to be, this came with it. This little QD socket and uh, mounting plate came with the sling. And originally it had an HK clip that was attached to a piece of bungee that was attached to the sling and then attached to this. So... There's a lot going on, and it never quite set the way I wanted to, so I just took that off and rerun it directly through there. Since this is a QD socket, it never really made sense to me to run it the other way. And then in the back, I made my own little attachment with the paracord because I didn't have a QD socket for the back. And I haven't decided to invest in one yet because this sling is going to get upgraded at some point, so I'm not sure how much more fussing with it I really want to do. But yeah, so that's the gun. Um... I know it looks like also, I'm going to touch on this, you see right there, it kind of looks like it's uh, got M-Lock, those are not M-Lock slots, I was not paying attention when I bought it and uh, didn't realize that they weren't, found that out the hard way, kind of pissed me off a little bit, but you know, live and learn, right? It's definitely done the job, I've got somewhere in the neighborhood of five or 600 rounds through it so far, I know that's not anything astounding but the only failures I've had with it were pretty much all ammo related except for one or two when I was putting the first like 60 rounds through it I had one or two failures to eject uh, I don't remember exactly what the number was but I remember them happening so yeah but after that I've had no issues out of it uh, everybody that shoots this gun loves it it's a really cool little ten and a half inch 
I don't know if I mentioned that before, but it's a 10 and a half inch 300 blackout, which for me, 10 and a half inch is kind of the sweet spot for long guns. I like that uh, length, even my 5.56, the plan is to build it out at 10 and a half. Yeah, I know you lose uh, velocity and therefore lethality and blah, 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 blah with the 5.56-223 round at that barrel length, but you still maintain enough for a close distance engagements, which for me, these rifles set up like this, or in this case pistol, is a 100 yards and end gun. And I know that's not a whole lot of distance, but practically it's a home defense, it's a truck gun. I don't intend to take shots longer than that. I have plans to build out guns for hunting and longer distance shots, but I don't really see using those as much as I would use one of these. I uh, train with them, I play with them all the time, you know, guys go to the range and just have a good time. And this is just more fun, it's handier for me. Uh, and I'm a big dude, I'm six foot three, 300 pounds, and it's a, uh, it's, everybody teases me because I'm the biggest guy in the group and I like the small smaller guns. Uh, for stuff like this anyways. My other friends tend to like 16-inch guns, but I like this because, again, it's a truck gun. I can use it inside my Suburban, no problem. Uh, moves around, avoiding steering wheels, stuff like that is a lot easier. It's definitely doable with 16-inch guns, but it's a lot easier with the 10 and a half. Uh, plan on building a 16-inch gun at some point. Uh, not really high on the priority list. Kind of have some other ones in front of it uh, to include a 20-inch AR. Uh, for some reason, I just really like those guns. But yeah, so this is just a quick little update on how the gun is and how it's set up right now, how I'm running it. And I'll do another one when I change something significant on it. All right, see you later. Bye.